Hi, it's Gary Kay. We're here at day zero, first day before the first day of the show. Absolutely. I'm here with Daniel Schwartzberg, who's the Director of Customer Experience at the HD Base T Alliance. Good afternoon, Daniel. How are Good you? Good afternoon, Gary. Great to be here. We're very, very excited. You know, we're just finishing the setup uh, in the background. Uh, it's going to be a big show for us, so it's great to be back in Las Vegas. We got a lot of stuff going on. We got this guy overhead making an announcement. <laughs> we got recordings coming through here. We got workers in the back of your booth. Are you going to be ready tomorrow morning? Absolutely. We've never missed one show uh, launch, so we're not going to miss this one either. We're going to be ready on time. Okay, so you probably, HD Base T, without people knowing it, probably in more integrated systems right now than any single technology out there right now because you're part of the glue that's put a lot of systems together and you've been doing this for about 10 almost 10 years now um, but HD Base T is not just what it originally was it's new it's different There's a lot more going on than what the original standard was so you're absolutely right in what you've said uh, we are an alliance with now more than 200 members 100 of which are actually on the show floor this week we've got 19 of those uh, in our booth with us uh, with a lot of new products uh, and part of the purpose of the alliance is of course to promote and to develop the spec uh, so you're right the beginning we had spec 1.0 uh, along came spec 2.0 about three years ago uh, which added support for additional native interfaces that we can extend over an HD base T link included support for fiber and many many other features uh, and right now what's happening is we've just elected a new uh, chair of the AV work group yeah that's uh, Paul Harris right Paul Harris from Aurora multimedia uh, and one of his first tasks is uh, is a subject of HD base TIP uh, you will remember from this show last year that we showed uh, a proof of concept for that particular solution here ability to transfer HD base T over an IP switch. Uh, that is now going into the specification development phase by that AV work group. So that's one of Paul's first tasks and the task of the work group to get it out there. So will that be 3.0 or what will it be called? Is it HD base T over IP? What are you calling it? Well, I'm not going to give you exactly which version of the spec it is because we've also made some changes recently to how the spec is organized. We've broken the spec up into, into different elements. Uh, but that's the next generation, if you like, of, uh, of HD Base T spec. Uh, and we see a lot of potential for that. AV uh, over IP, there's a lot of talk about it right now. There's a lot of buzz in the industry. There's a lot of confusion in the industry yeah, as well. That, that, is, that, is, that is part of the, part of the issue. So HD Base T set out to be uh, all over Cat X, which is video, audio, control, Ethernet, and uh, power, all over Cat X, um, ultimately. But the market has, has evolved since then. Originally, mostly what you were sending, the big bandwidth stuff was 1080p. Now the big bandwidth stuff is 4K and beyond, uh, and HD Base T has adapted the standard to be able to handle all that. So, so right now, I mean, uh, an uncompressed HD Base T leak can handle 4K 3444, 4K 60 with 420 gamma coding. Uh, we have approved uh, a solution <coughs> using DSC compression from Vesa, very low-level compression, three to one, that gets us to 4K 6444 as well as HDR 10 bit. Is that at, uh, That's at 10 bit. Okay. That's 10 bit HDR, right? Okay. Uh, and as we move forward, uh, we look looking at 16 gig links which will give us HDR10 and 4K6444 without the need for any compression and if we add to those 16 gig links a 3 to 1 DSC then they, that then brings us to be able to handle the HDMI 2.0 formats up to 48 gigahertz. Yeah and, and, and all of this is sort of it's kind of a moving target isn't it because as these standards get approved by Visa and by even DCI and SEMTI all of a sudden you're having to, to revisit your standard and make sure it's upwardly uh, future compatible and, and able to handle all the different standards because it used to be back in the day that a typical boardroom or conference room would just have video conferencing camera in it, a laptop connection, you were sending 1080 across uh, a wire, but now you're putting in lots of different sources. Some are network, some are legacy, and some are 4K, and some could be one day even 8K. Absolutely. Uh, and that's why the Alliance and the AV work group is so important, because we bring in the collective uh, knowledge of the, the ecosystem of our membership to help develop the spec. They, they know the market, we have our view on the market, they have their view on the market, and together we find a consensus to move us forward for the next steps uh, of the spec, the next phase in the spec development. And correct me if I'm wrong, it's hdbase.t.org. Right? HDBase T, WWHDBase T dot ORG. Yeah, yeah. And that's where you can learn more about the standard. Now, if you come by the booth here, um, you're going to see 19, I believe, partner companies are going to show different products that they have. We're actually going to go and shoot an individual video at all of these. And so you'll have an opportunity to go in the video search window at raypubs.com slash infocom2018 and, and do a search on HDBase T. And you can see all those videos. Plus, we're going to go and we're going to shoot about 150 other videos for a lot of your partners out there. So you're going to have at least a couple of hundred videos videos from just Infocom that have HD based it. And that's what I was talking about in the very beginning 
and that you've touched more system products than probably any other standard up to this point in the last 10 years. Where do where can we expect, if I'm standing here in this booth 10 years from today, or let's say five years from today, let's be realistic, what do you think we'll be talking about? I think we're going to be talking about more and more members. I think we're going to be talking about, yes, an HD-based IP solution. Mm -hmm. IP is not the, the, the golden bullet, if you like, to solve all problems. It has use cases that are specific to it. But the fact that our planned IP solution will be interoperable with non-IP HD-based. You mean like legacy, like legacy and IP, IP in the same room? Absolutely. So, so for the first time, we're going to be able to combine these two different domains. And in five years' time, I think that's the way to go. I think in-room, probably you don't want an IP solution. When you want to go cross-campus, you do. But you want to keep all that great HD-based products that you've already installed and being able to combine the HD base T with the HD base T IP worlds is going to create this hybrid domain where we can have HDMI for example connect into an HD base T or connect to an HD base T IP product and, and, and there's no problems with interoperability there's no problems with having to replace existing equipment and that's a very unique approach to AV over IP that we don't see today in the industry. One, one advantage of going to hdbase.t.org is you actually have a sort of a directory, for lack of a better term, of all the products that are available, or not all, I should say a lot of the products that are available, and what they're capable of doing. Because with the quote-unquote five-play system you have, which as I said was video, audio, control, ethernet, and power, not all products do exactly the same thing. Some do in power and some don't. Some do audio and video, some don't. So you have the ability to go to the website and you sort of have a directory of all those and a glossary of what everything means and it gives you an, a, an ability to see what's compatible with what. Has that been helpful to your members and also the people buying HDBase-T products and specking HDBase-T? Yeah, very much so. And I, I think what's important to say here is that, is that the beauty of a spec is that, is that it's a super set of features. Uh, and the fact that not every product is a five-play product is great because different vendors want to differentiate their products to have high-end products, low-end products, high-priced products, low-priced products, shall we say, uh, and the ability to be able to have a product set that is not the full five-play. It's like that with HDMI as well, by the way. I have an HDMI TV at home that doesn't support the HDMI Ethernet channel. Some have CEC, have. some don't. Mine doesn't. Mine yeah. doesn't have ARC. So we see this elsewhere in the industry, and that, that directory, which is on our website, but also as a mobile app, you can go in and download on your, your iPhone or on your Android device, uh, an app that gives you all of that listing as well, really does help our customers identify what, what uh, elements of which products are expected in, uh, to be found in that particular device and so you can help find out what will interoperate with each other. Everything will interoperate. I can take a product that's five play and a product that's that's two play uh, and it will interoperate or you won't get the features right, that the two play doesn't support but I'll still get my video passing so it's not that you get a blank screen heaven forbid on the contrary we have the information there for the installers who are choosing the equipment on being on the website on them on their mobile yeah, devices exactly. and that's pushing them forward very well and most importantly the manufacturers have built HD base T inputs in their products it tells you which ones are compatible to what Daniel Schwartzberg thanks for joining me I appreciate Pleasure. it uh, best of luck to you, you. And, and your team at the show of course as I said you can go and see all the videos we shot here at Infocom or you can go to the hdbase.t.org site and you can see all their partners and all the partner products or just search hdbase.t at raypubs.com. Click on the Infocom link and you can see it all. Daniel, thanks. Pleasure Best of luck to you. you. Thanks. Thanks for taking time as you're doing this setup here. By the way, it's like 110 degrees right here. And if you walk like 20 feet that way, it's like 80 degrees. You realize that, right? Well, I hadn't realized that until now. And thanks for pointing it out. Now I'll go in the corner yeah, and well, cry. <laughs> black shirt here. At least I'm in the short sure. sleeve. So uh, it is hot here. We are in Vegas, 105 degrees. We're all getting ready to head to the opening reception. Thanks for watching.